In today's episode of Home Built Workshop, we're doing a jig. No, I'm not doing a jig. You guys definitely don't want to see that. But we are going to build this jig right here, which I'm going to use to route this recess in my bass guitar neck so that I can put my logo on there. I'm also going to show you a quick tip about a one way you can use Fusion 360 to design something around an existing shape. So stick around. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. My name is Jeff and today we are back on the bass guitar neck build. In the last episode you saw me get it all ready up to this point, but I wasn't able to finish it because the very next step that I need to do is to route the recess in here where I put my logo. To do that on a regular guitar neck I have a jig that I've built that the neck fits in and then a plate goes over the top and it guides the router right where I need to cut it. But since this headstock is larger it doesn't fit that jig so I need to build an entirely new jig that fits this size headstock. Now the jig that I made for the guitar necks was really just a trial and error process of using random scraps of wood glued on in different places and I was able to make that work. It's kind of crude but it works really well. However, I think we can do a little bit better for this jig. Since I have a lot more experience now with Fusion 360 and 3D printing, I think we can design something that the headstock will sit down in, repeatable every single time, and then we can have a template that'll index somehow over the top. Now Fusion 360 has a couple of tools in there that I find really helpful, especially for applications like this, where you wanna take an existing shape and be able to sketch something, in my case, the outline of this neck, and be able to pull that into Fusion. What I'm gonna end up doing is taking my guitar template and basically putting it on my scanner with a ruler next to it. That's gonna allow us to scale it to the actual size where we can then trace around this using the spline tool to create basically this exact shape. So let's jump into Fusion. I'm gonna show you really quick just those couple things and then we'll get back to this jig. So this is gonna start out outside of Fusion 360 with me scanning my guitar template with a six inch steel ruler and saving that picture to my computer. Then we'll jump into Fusion 360 and we can insert that picture by going to the insert canvas and then you can browse to where your picture is and open that up. So this is the scan that we're starting with and if we zoom in you can see that we have a ruler here where we can see the marks on the ruler pretty clearly and then if we go up here to the calibrate menu you can select your points. I like to try to select at least several inches. I don't want to just select one small portion, although I guess you could. To do mine, I selected, I think, four or five inches. And then when you're done with that, it will scale it to actual size. So it gives you a very accurate starting point to do your sketching. Then from this picture, I was able to create a new sketch very accurately by going in really close you can very accurately draw around your shape inside that sketch I use the spline tool where you can accurately follow curves to draw everything out and it worked really well from there I was able to create basically the outline of the template that I wanted and extrude that out. Then on top of that, I created another template, which basically has my cutout shape. This was another sketch on top of that picture. So that now, when we turn off all the sketches, there's our cutout template, and there's our headstock template ready to export and send to a 3D printer. These other alignment holes in here are set kind of in weird places, but that's because I have designed another odd shape template that I can sort of fit on my printer. So if I do need to make any sort of changes, I can export kind of this weird shaped thing. And although it's not ideal, it will fit on my printer. It just doesn't look very good. But 
it's an option if I need to make any changes rather than trying to have another one of these larger ones printed that doesn't fit on my printer. But overall, it's a pretty simple process and it works quite well. You just have to go in and make sure you scale your original picture correctly. You want to use a ruler that you can uh, you can see the lines really well and uh, really zoom in there when you're setting your scale. You want to try to click right on the line and it should work pretty good. You may have to play around with it a little bit. I think I had to rescale mine maybe twice or so just to get it just right. But overall, works really good. Once I had the templates all modeled up, I was able to export that and save it as an STL file, which can then be sent to a 3D printer. The only problem is that these templates are too big for my 3D printer. Is that an excuse for a new 3D printer? I don't know. <laughs> But my good buddy Dennis has a larger 3D printer and he volunteered to print these out for me. So I was able to email him the STL files and voila, here's our templates ready to make this jig. Thanks a lot, Dennis, for printing these out, man. I really, really appreciate it. This is gonna make this project go a lot smoother. And just to show you really quick, that fits perfect. Now, just like I do with my guitar templates, I am not going to use these as the actual template. I'm gonna end up making a copy of these and setting these aside, especially since right now I can't duplicate these if I were to damage them. So we're gonna use these to mock everything up and then when the time comes, we'll make a duplicate of these that we'll actually use for the jig. I'm gonna use this scrap of three quarter inch plywood for the base. I think the length is okay. I know that it's way too wide, but at the moment, I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna to need to rip this down. Once we figure that out, we'll rip that down. I think we'll leave the length where it is. I want the neck to be able to sit somewhere in this orientation, and I want space on either side because I'm gonna build this so that if I'm working on a left-handed neck, I can also index it in exactly the same spot. We'll be able to just flip the jig over and have the exact opposite route. So this will go somewhere in here. We'll measure this, find the center, I've also got these little brackets that I've made that will fit in the corners, which will hold this piece in place, but it's got some standoffs on here, which will keep the top template spaced up off the neck. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you guys can see that because this black is kind of dark. It'll make sense when we get to that point. I'm gonna lay the pieces in place and take a couple of measurements. That way I can determine how wide I need to rip this piece of plywood. Then I'll locate the jig in the center of my piece of plywood and clamp it down. Now I can drill some pilot holes and screw the little riser blocks in place. Now I'll just flip it around and do the same thing to capture these other two corners. That is the last screw. So just really quick how that's gonna work is once we have the wooden model of this made, this will be able to pop into place pretty much anyway, left-handed or right-handed. The neck will hang off this side. That's why I left this kind of long because I wanna make sure there's plenty of support so the neck doesn't wanna tip. We're gonna add some toggle clamps later, but I still wanna make sure that neck has a lot of support there. Now there's one more thing that I wanna do just to make sure the alignment can never ever shift and it's always gonna be spot on. I've got a set of holes modeled in here for some 3 8 dowels. I wanna have the dowels glued into the plywood so that the jig slips down on the dowels and then gets captured at all four corners by these little brackets. I've also got matching dowel holes on the top piece that will also slide down over the top and make sure that they are always in exact alignment. That way, if somehow I have one of these brackets, I don't know, breaks or maybe it's off a teensy bit, there's never a chance that these two can be out of alignment. As long as they fit over those dowels, we're gonna be good to go. To mark out the holes for the dowels, I'm just using a 3 8 diameter transfer punch. It fits the holes perfectly. We're just gonna mark those out, drill them, and glue in some dowels.
Once that glue is dry, now these pieces just drop into place. Really nice. There's no movement whatsoever. I think we're now ready to go ahead and make these out of some MDF. Now this piece is gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna make an exact copy of, but the other piece, I'm gonna make an exact copy of the inner dimensions. The outside needs to be the exact same width, but I need to add 5 eighths of an inch to either end. That way it'll work with my little brackets. To set the width of this piece, I'm just gonna use the original template to set the fence on my table saw. After cutting the pieces down to size, I'm going to attach my templates using some double-sided tape. Then at the drill press, I'm going to drill out some holes for the waste material as well as the holes for the dowel pins. Before routing it flush, I did use the scroll saw off camera to remove a little bit more of the waste material. For the base portion of the jig, I just used the bandsaw to cut away the waste material in the center. There were a couple areas on the template where the router bit just couldn't get into, so I just cleaned those up really quick with a file. Since it was MDF, it filed really easily and only took a couple of minutes. Now I can trim the top template down to the final size, and we'll remove the templates and do a test fit. Well, so far so good. I'm really happy with the way this thing's fitting together. There's just a couple things left that I need to do before we can try this out. I want to add a toggle clamp on either side here. That way we can lock the neck in place. I'm going to just screw on a block of wood and then attach the clamp to it. And then on these little riser brackets, I have holes at the corners and those are going to get tapped to use some thumb screws that'll tighten down just to make sure that this top piece can't move at all and then once we have all that together then i'll trim these dowels off below the surface of this top piece that way the router can pass smoothly across here and we'll test it these are now called bird clamps because they look like a bird is that the technical name um, no. I don't know what the technical name is. They're not bird clamps. I like it. These pieces are basically just made of plastic, so they're not going to be super durable, but I'm not really worried about the screws stripping out because it's just going to apply a little bit of tension just to help hold that top template in place and keep it from wiggling around. If at some point it does become an issue, I can easily reprint these and use some threaded inserts to help make these more durable. Now I'll mark the height of the dowels and use a flush trim saw to trim them off just below that height. pins are now below the surface that way when we run our router on there it's not going to snag on anything i think we're ready to try this out to test it out i've just made up a small copy of my template we'll use this to test it first before we actually put a neck in here we'll just load this guy in now it's not long enough for the bird clamp to catch it but i think it's going to work fine for testing cut out template in place Snug it down. I really don't know if I need all these set screws, but it's fine. And I'm just gonna use cordless trim router with a flush trimming bit, test this guy out. I know that the first pass is gonna cut into the lower template as we remove some of that material, and that's totally okay. It's not gonna affect anything at all. I was planning for that.
All right, let's check this out. This is looking good. I think we're ready to move on to a neck. That looks cool. Don't forget to tighten down the bird clamp. That worked awesome. I couldn't ask for a better result. And now, let's make this official. It's a Haley. And there we go. That turned out awesome. Now, some of you might be wondering why go to all this trouble to make a jig that I'm using for a one-off commission project. And that would be a great question, but really, this neck design is going to be used for a lot of Haley Guitars builds. Really, for this project, the only really custom aspect is the body. That's a totally commissioned piece. But for the neck, I'm gonna use this for other builds. So it's kind of something that I've been wanting to do anyway, to build a nice jig for shaping the base necks. But now that I've got it, I can use it on a ton more projects, not just this commissioned. The body for this one is really the commission piece. This will be used on a lot more builds for Haley Guitars. With the jig built and the logo in place, I'm now ready to move on to radiusing the fretboard, installing the frets, and then finally on to shaping the neck. I'm gonna do that off to the side, outside of this video. You guys have seen me build necks before. You've seen me install frets as well as radius the fretboard. It's gonna be the exact same process. I'm gonna put some links down below in the video description if you wanna see my process for doing that on a regular guitar neck. It's gonna be exactly the same for this one. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. Maybe it gives you some ideas for building some jigs or something that you're looking to do in your shop and some ways to do it. Maybe using Fusion 360 to design a part that fits around an existing shape. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next time. And a fly flies around my face. We gotta get that guy attached. No! <laughs> Poor birdie! Tweet!